Yo guys, we are back playing some more Trails of Cold Steel 3. So I do apologize for that last part being a little bit short, but my, my, my headsets were, uh, well, what I used to record audio went, uh, it was about to die in like half a second after I, fi I finished cutting that apart. So, uh, we are now back playing some more Trails of Cold Steel 3s. And after that, so to summarize the last part, we were basically destroying some crystal beasts in order to uh, increase, to further progress along the story in the air, this area. So now this part, we are officially done with uh, Sharon. Yes, it was a very short time with Sharon, but for the most part, uh, Sharon's not like, oh, I didn't, I didn't use her S-Craft in the last part. Aw, oh, shucks. Oh, well. But uh, you may remember this person, Mr. Infamous number Enforcer number one, Mick Byrne. So that, of course, there is the illusion for the second biggest nemesis that we have here. We we now know who the enemy is. It's Enforcer Number Zero and Enforcer Number One, McBurn and Campanella. So these will be our main bad guys in this chapter. So basically, McBurn was right there saying he 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 thinks that uh, of course the what you call it the Ashen Chevalier is going to be a pain in the ass along with Enforcer Number Ten. I think he just said ten. I, I can't, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm blanking out, but what he's referring to is the severing chains. Of course, Sharon right here. Oh, so this is going to be kind of Sharon's background story. I haven't really actually cared to translate this because I don't really care for Sharon as a character, other than the fact that she's linked to Alicia and the Reinford Company, and she's part of Ouroboros, but uh, I really should at some point. So right there on the left, it's Leonhardt, Enforcer number two. Of course, by the time, as we saw in chapter one, he's already deceased. Uh, top, the top, the top right, or you want to just say the top, it's, uh, you see, I believe those are all the Anguists. I'm not sure if that's every single one. You have, of course, the Spear Maiden. A couple of them are blanked out. The guy in the front, I believe, was Anguist 2 or something like that. I think he's deceased, according to one of the other games. And there's the old man uh, on the right. I believe he was, like, the founder of something. I can't remember specifically, but I know, I'm pretty sure the guy in the front is dead. And of course, we have on the bottom is Vita Clotilde. And of course, the Ouroboros is a symbol on the far right, which is the snake, and it means like snakes. Oh, so, I'm sorry, she's number nine. Number nine. It says right there. So this is where she met people with the Reinford company. This is where it is. And to be honest, most of the story, as much as she's telling it right now, and how she met the Rein the Reinford family, uh, there's gonna be more later on in the last chapter that's more that's more pertinent, story wise. So uh, that th there's a key point is she just said right there that Rena Reinford is the one that gave her the name Kruger and her, her first name Sharon because before that she didn't have a name. She was basically just when she met with Ouroboros she was basically given the number enforcer number nine. So 
ちろんリース様がお嬢様と結ばれることになれば旦那様としてご奉仕を<laughs> so she's right there. She was talking about what are the chances that uh, Rin would, of course, marry into the Reinfurt company, but uh, that's not going to happen. Not in this game. So I did mention earlier that there are three prospective people that they, they look forward to as the main heroines of this game. And I probably should see, of course, obviously, the number one with the most juicy scene at the end, of course, is Elisa. Then you have Laura, and surprisingly enough, Emma are the three main. Quote unquote heroines of this game now because they get they do all three of them get a special scene once you get to it on the in the second to the final chapter in the game. Uh, so okay, uh, I'm gonna real quick skip fast forward, skip this because they were talking about how that those flowers were causing those abnormal things to ha from happening. So that's what's going on, and here's the pantagruel. Uh, I'm going to slow down right here because there's a lot of explanation that's to be happened. So they were talking in the train about the incident that just happened with the crystal beast and what the flower means for it. But uh, right there, if you just you saw the giant airship pass by, that is the Pantagruel. That is the flagship right here. This is the flagship for the Empire. So there's some going to be some important people on board. So that's the Pantagruel. As you remember from uh, Trails of Code Steel 2, the Pantagruel premiered there along with uh, Duke Cayenne. And the Noble Alliance. So we're gonna now we can fast forward, because we don't. Not, this, this is all nothing until we actually see who's on board. So there's gonna be some familiar faces, obviously. Yeah, we don't need to see any of that. That this, 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 skip. Fast forward. So here's where it's important. So that is Machis' father, uh, mayor to Heimdallar, if you remember correctly from the first two games. And let's see who we have next. This is Alicia's mother, Irina Reinford, head of the Reinford company. And two bodyguards for the most important people on board. So this is Oliver, Arner, and okay, the real reason the bodyguards are here. So this, as you guys do know, this is Alfin Reiner, the most important part of the Reiner family, I guess, because I gonna I hate Cedric Arner, and of course you have your little sister Elise right there. I mean Reed's little sister Elise right there. So I know Olivert has been in multiple games that not in, not just in the Trails of Cold Steel series. So um, for the most part, he does spoiler. He does join our party. He is very terrible. He's just like a more bulky mage. So right now the tower is going to be held. Ooh, who do we have here? Miss Vita Clotilde. So another person that. It's gonna be up. Sh that's gonna just randomly show up in this freaking chapter for no reason. I I don't know. I, I just lost my train of thoughts. Uh, I was talking about Oliver, how he was in like multiple games. Uh, shucks, I don't know. Yeah, there's no real reason to. T oh, oh, and guess who we have here? If it, if it, you didn't want to cram up this chapter up right <laughs> right now with characters, we have. Azure Sigurd, or as we all know, th there's no fooling anybody here. It's Crow. Seriously, guys, like if you if you didn't see this one coming, it, it, it's freaking Crow. Like they couldn't have made it any more freaking obvious. So you're wondering how how did he survive from last from the last game? Well, there's a lot of BS going around with that. So, okay, I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to explain it. Yes, he is alive, even after getting, losing his heart. Crow is still alive. So, of course, they're watching the announcement, because Thor's, Thor's Academy 2 will be participating in the banquet at that at the Crossbell Tower. So, 
we're gonna we're gonna sweep some stuff up before we head over there. And they're gonna go back. So we got a couple more missions to do before we we can go attend the banquet. So let's go. Let's go. Oh, did I? F oh, you know what? Before we do, let's uh, go. Let's uh, heal up first. Typically, I always choose train car three so I can just go back to train car two. And this is the fastest way to get to the showers. So we are all healed up. Let's head back. So I need to check one thing before we head on, because I don't know if it, it will pop up. Whoops. So it looks like it didn't pop up, okay. I think it's on day two. So if you don't know what I mean, in that area where we just fought the crystal base in the last episode, there's a there's a black textbook that comes up there later on. But I believe, even if you miss it, you can go buy it later on from the storekeeper. But uh, for the most part, uh, I'll try to show it to you where it is. Because that's the only one I think that's most likely missable if you don't go back. So they're talking right here, talking about the, the pentagram. So right here, this is the conversation where Altina... Oh, this is going to be real close. I think it's the next area over where... It's the conversation between Altino and Reen what, of what happened on the Panther Girl. <laughs> so this, I'm, 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 I'm kind of not talking over, but this is the conversation that he's having. They're talking about <laughs> when Reen was uh, touching Re Altino when she was sleeping. And she ch chose a cold seal too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing to myself. All right, that should be the la I believe the last of it in crossbow. So there's nothing there. Uh, just double check. I don't think there's gonna be anything there. Yeah, uh, we don't want to head over to the red mark area just yet. I don't think there's anything here. Oh, wow, this is taking a long time to load. Oh, yes, now the Chinese consulate is now open, and we can go do that. So let's go, let's go and do that. 
So this is pretty much like very very useless. Doesn't have anything to do to do with us. So we're gonna hear talking with Shin, and we're gonna do his side quest. And let's just go. I believe there's uh something a little something to do here, but that's it. Yeah. So we there's just that that just mini event, and there's Vivi here if you didn't know as well too. So Vivi's here. So we want to go to area one in order to finish this guy's quest. He's he asked us to uh find his uh his briefcase that he lost. So we're gonna find his briefcase. Uh, whoopsies. I meant to hit the Arcus. Oh, no. Um, yeah, it's over there. I probably should have just went to the other entrance. Oh, well. Shouldn't be too bad from here. Oh, 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 oh! Almost hit, almost had roll kill right there. So, this is all you gotta do. Uh, I know, where is it? Right here. So, we gotta catch it. So this is one of the few times you've seen me play uh, fishing. Oh, that was bad. I almost forgot how to do fishing in this game since I was so used to Trails of Cold Steel's style. Like, man, I'm like, I cannot do fishing on Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 now because I can't button mash as fast anymore. So we got it, and we're gonna return the suitcase back to him. I believe that's the only thing in the afternoon that we have left. And we also can play against uh, him in, uh, whatchamacallit now, Vantage Master. So we are absolutely going to do that right now. We're going to beat some ass right here. Oh, someone using an actual fucking high level card now. Or well, not a high level, but semi high level. Uh, we do not need this or this right now. Okay, I got magic. Now, what I was looking for, I was looking for a crystal. Uh, that wasn't the most optimal turn one, but I'll take it. All right, sweet. Just power up my card. All right, sweet. Power up my card. I don't care for the one damage. Yeah, you can increase my attack all you want, friend. It doesn't do anything for you. And that can attack. Destroy that. And I think take that carry with me. As long as I get... Oh, I didn't get one attack? Oh, shucks. Oh no, he ha oh he has four attack, holy shit. And he drew another card. Alright, sweet. Thanks for giving me another fucking attack point. Really appreciate it. Uh don't wanna waste my attack on that. Oh, I don't have enough. It looks like this guy is gonna go down. Oh not. I guess not next turn. I thought he was gonna go down because he's gonna take four, but no he took three. So that's good. What do, I have no idea why he brought put an arch in the front row, but he put an arch in the front row. Makes no sense, that JPEG. I have two out of my three archers right now, for some odd reason. Bring that up as well. Like I said, I have no reason, no understanding as to why he put his arch in the front row. Oh, am I going to win right here? Damn. Nice. As you can see, very easy. <laughs> I say that because I have like literally one of the best cards and master cards in the game. Ah, uh, okay. That should be everything for that area. We went there and all that's left is this area. Cause we have one last I believe one last quest to do in this area. Uh, oh yeah, we can go into there now. Oh, and Vivi's on the outside now because she's looking at the Panther Girl for some odd reason, I guess, you know. 
She was just watching on TV just like a couple seconds ago, but no, she's got to watch it now. Uh, la, 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 la. So I don't know if this girl is supposed to be like a reference to someone else in another game. I'm not sure. Uh, someone could probably tell me that later on, but I have no inkling as to who that is. What is she just what she's connected to at all? So, R.I.P. So we are going over here into this next area. So this area has a good place to uh, farm large monsters, and there is a very challenging boss fight at the end of this, which for some reason I had a lot of trouble on. You know what? Yes, I want to have Altina on the back. I love of all Altina's when she goes like, "Yes, go, 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 go." Okay, get off here. And if you want horses in this area, you talk to these dudes. They give you access to the horse. So right there, we have now have. Uh, let me show you real quick. We have that. Oh shit! I can't do the horse right here because I'm on the bike. But uh, there. Just to show you, I now have access to the horse in this area. So I prefer the bike. It's just better, in my opinion. It's easier to handle. Oh, and I missed that uh, sightseeing spot right there. I know there's one right here. I don't know if it was on the bottom or the top, but it's on the top. So we do our sightseeing photo right here for Vivi. And we can move on. We take the bike, 100%. And of course, you can customize who's on the back if you're using the uh, much McCloud as well too. I, I'm forgetting the horse. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Got that. Maybe we can just run to the next area. Since it's, since it's basically just right here. Do, 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 do. Oh, Sepik. Very Sepik is very, very useful if it's your first playthrough. Other than that, it's pretty useless. Because you're just using it for money, to be honest. In most cases, this game, you can I use it. Actually, I use a lot of money in this game because I'm farming CP increasing items. Because I'm lazy. So it's a good thing that Salamander thing on the ground didn't fucking attack us. Because I then have to dodge it. Let's go! Oh, we don't actually have to go down there, because that's a fishing spot only. Yep, fishing spot only. So if you need to go fish, of course, dude, you can fish. You have to fish everything. So this is the enemy you want to farm in this area. These these T-Rexes are very, very useful to farm. They have a lot of XP. So definitely farm them if you're missing levels. If you're not like me, or I'm probably missing levels right now. But, uh, yeah. So, you can tell which area you can go to next, you can go to this area next, but this one, the game will just tell you no, you can't go that way. So I'm assuming that's going to be for Trails of Code Steel 4, possibly, I don't know. I'm hoping they actually do a 180 and just allow you to go to completely new areas, not interlock the areas. So, they said there's the sighting was out over here on this side of the road, so obviously we can't go this way because the game won't let us. And like I said before... There's no area marker that says you can go to the next area, so there we go. So, we're just going to move on over here. I don't think you can use your bikes here. We might have. I don't know. Then they're saying, like, oh, it's, the setting was down that side, but we have to get permission to get inside. So let's go see who's in here. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's a very familiar face. And one that I personally love. So, if it wasn't a big giveaway, you see that big fish that came in right there? Well, guess who it is? It's Kenneth Lake Lord. <laughs> so, if you don't remember, Kenneth Lake Lord was a year two in Thor's Academy in the League class. He is one. He's part of the Lake Lord family, a family that is basically all throughout uh, 
handle I'm not handlebar, but uh Erebonia with a bunch of fishing shops, which we'll, we will see, guys. We will see a bunch of fishing shops in the Lake Lord name. So he was our fishing person in the first game, and it wasn't in the second game to an extent. But uh, we mostly used Annabelle in the first, in the second game for the first half. But he would be unlocked later on if if he didn't know. So this is the mysterious man, the mysterious hobo as I like to call him. So please remember this man very very well because we he will play in a very very unusual part in this story. So he, they're going to basically be talking to us about uh the, the incidents in this area. So remember this face. Remember this face. Then these are just heal spots. It's just the game is just letting you know. It's just like the showers. That's why it has that little symbol right there. So we're gonna head out and go fight the monster that's in this area. Because now we have permission to enter this area thanks to Kenneth. I think there's one more treasure chest in here. All right. So uh, I do want to preference this if this is your first time playing the game and you're fighting this boss right here. This is going to be much more challenging than it seems. So, here is that red flower again. Ah, oh, sorry about that. Oh, sorry about that. Oh. So here's the flower that's causing the the, the currents. ナナクミ特務課の者だ。何者だ。初めまして。名乗ってもいいんだけど、ここじゃさすがにギャラリーが足りないかな。どこからだ。でも、せっかくだから、ちょっと見せてもらおうかな。ブルブランたちを退けた
Oh wow, he gets a critical on the first turn. Oh, and he gets to move. Wow, what a piece of shit! What a piece of shit! So as you see, Reen right now doesn't actually have a turn counter on his demon form because we have it infinitely for this fight. But for this, for the most part, you actually kind of do need it. Sledgehammer! And now we break. We now we have like literally everything we need to break this fight with. So this is the setup I like to use, pretty much in every single boss fight. As you can see right here, I literally get more C. I get more brave points than I fucking can generate. By using current, I can basically reduce the amount of action points it takes to do a move. And I can infinitely chain it into itself. Or until the boss finally gets a turn after how many action points I have to use, which is ridiculous. So that's pretty much the gist of what you're going to want to do on Nightmare. So I didn't think there was a, any way you could get more broken than Treasure Code 2 Steel 2 system. Where... Pretty much, you could just use Grail Burst infinitely along with Attack Order. <laughs> that was extremely broken, along with Bursting. I'm not Bursting, but uh, the, the stupid Team Synergy thingy Mobobber. That was extremely broken. So, of course, uh, Rain's power is going out of, out of control.私たちの術とは系統が違うみたいね。元気か。大丈夫なんですか。ああ。心配かけてすまない。周り回るを封じられるとは。俺もちょっと浮かつだったな。はあ。もう、そういう問題じゃないでしょ。どうか。無理はし
Well, I preferred Selene in the first game when she was she wasn't talking half the time. Alrighty, so there's pretty much. Well, I shouldn't say the end of the first day. We are we still have another hefty part to do in this first day. So we get to meet Celine right here, and of course we know Emma. So right now the story is I'm gonna fast forward this because it's not it's not dialogue right here. Emma is searching for her sister. The well, of course, if you don't know the Azure Maiden or. The Azure Diva we, we saw earlier, Vlita Clotilde. So she's looking for her right now. But uh, and right in that fight, she she basically knew that Capanello was kind of trying to hunt for her. So that's why he's here. But he uh, instead fought, uh, uh, what you call it? He, he, he basically came upon Class 7 and decided to entertain the idea of attacking them. So there's that. And uh, if you notice right there before I cut out, I fast forward it. Altino wanted to go on to uh, Reen's bike. She's like, but no, the unit's like, no, let's let's have them, let's have Reen and Emma have their alone time. So if you're wondering, those are giant cannons from the Reinford company that was basically used at Fort Gorelia. Those, you know, those ones, those huge ones that were supposed to fire at Crossbell. Yep. So those are being brought somewhere. But why would the Empire need cannons on the outskirts on a territory? So that's a little bit ominous right there. So we're just going to let that be. So this is where Emma's staying for the time being. But uh, we are going to head over to the tower now for the banquet. Because that's what Toa called us. Like, sorry, I'm, sorry I'm skipping. As this, I'm trying to skip as much as like what's not dialogued properly. So... I'm not boring people to death on this let's play if people want me to like slow down everything I can slow down everything but for my part I want to keep things rolling at a steady pace so it's not like there's no dialogue and me not talking over like literally nothing because it's just scroll after scroll of Japanese text So this is the main party, but class seven will have, I mean, not class seven, but all Thor's Academy two will have a different room to enter, but we get to meet with the mayor and some important figures here that we saw on the Pantagru come in. So we're technically part of the security, the security guards here. So that's why we're, what we're here for in this banquet. We're security, I guess. You know, like a bunch of kids as security. Jesus Christ. And I already kind of introduced them earlier, but yeah, the game's introducing them to us now again. ニオミにかかるわね。アークス So she is the she is the princess of the royal family, Alfin. As if you if as, if if I didn't like I mentioned that already like how many times? Who knows? 
もう少し早くこうした機会を持ちたくもありましたそう、looks like Alfin noticed music music over there for some reason And here is Prince Oliver, the third in line. So you're wondering, how come he looks the oldest out of all three siblings from us, uh, from uh, Alfin and Cedric? Well, because his uh, he was born from a common blood, even though his father was of royal blood. So technically, he's the last in line, even though he's the oldest. So that's why he has the most, most I would say, luxury out of all the three because he he goes around doing all those sorts of adventures because literally they don't care about him the most because if he dies it doesn't really matter as much as the other two dying for the royal bloodline. So we are going to have a talk with a bunch of these groups right here. And I'm going to fast forward through everything Rufus says because of this game's ending. I never liked him in the first first game. I knew there was always some sketchy shit going on with him. In the second game, it kind of solidified that I didn't like Rufus. But in this game, I really don't like Rufus because you will see on the last chapter what happens. And he is not a f person to fuck around with. Okay, but we're not getting Rufus. We're getting these two losers. I shouldn't say losers. I like them. What am I talking about? いえ、せっかくの機会ですし。改めてお久しぶりです。礼儀に使うか。イリーナ会長。シャロンさんももうご合流していたみたいですね。おかげさまで滞りな皆様も無事に本日の活動を終えられたようで何より。特務活動については
相変わらず仲が良くて何よりだこの人たちが工場殿下と教官の妹さん、はあ、お二人とも夢みたいに綺麗で素敵って<笑>よく来てくれたね So it's, it's like Prince Oliver just in the corner of the whole conversation, just not interacting that whole time for some reason. <laughs> yes, yes, everyone, thank you, Prince Oliver, for telling us we, we, we graduated again for like the how many billionth time we've heard that in this game. So they're basically just saying, huh, he seems a little bit weird. Yes, he is. So now we're going to fast forward through everything because this, this is the part where we can skip because it just ran the dialogue and this is basically Oliver wanted to tell Rin that something's different with his little brother. He's changed ever since the Vermilion Apocalypse that happened during the second game. So there's that conversation. And, we're and Rufus is going to talk to us, to Rain by himself. But we're going to fast forward this because Rain is just asking about what, you know, the dogs are, what, what basically what the, the Iron Bloods are. And what have they been doing? Because you also want to talk about Hamill and the destruction of that. Why Why did Hamill have to die under, that, that massacre have to happen under, whatchamacallit's order, uh, Gilith Osborne's order. So he's, we want to talk about the Iron Bloods and what the hell happened, but of course Rufus doesn't say anything. That's the whole conversation, and I just didn't want to do that because literally Rufus is just, if you actually listen to the whole conversation, Rufus is just, just being an asshole the whole time. So he's remembering about V who died and part of how he was part of the Hamel. I probably could have just saved that, all that dialogue right there. But uh, it looks like Musi has something up her sleeves. So you can talk to all the students here and they get some interesting dialogue and all that, but for the most part, we're, we're just going to ignore everything. And man, this food looks good. What do we have some here? Some bread, sandwich, some meat slices, pasta, just reused assets. It looks like wine. I don't know why, but uh, we got some like other pasta dishes or something. I, I don't know. Like, it looks like curry, chicken maybe. I, I don't know. There's a lot of reused assets right there. And they leave you this. And they leave you these vending machines here if you need some heals. And they specifically give you a CP one just in case. And I don't know if you noticed, but I have 999 of. I mean, I have 99 of them because CP is useful. Always have CP. So as you notice, we didn't see music coming along this way, so I wonder where she could be. But we have to go down this way first. So Vivi wants to get into this party, but apparently, you know, instructor Mikhail stopped her. So hey, yeah, but we're we're just gonna let her through like that. Mikhail's just is like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> but uh, now we're gonna go over here for the real meat. I'm going to stay quiet for this one, because this one is kind of... I'll let this one rock. そこは<笑> I'm 
遅かったからただでさえ何の力にもなってあげられなかった私もそうだわもっと力になれればってお二人とも<笑>そのお気持ちだけで十分ですどの道アストライアに居続けることはできませんでしたからまあ姫様と乙女のたしなみで盛り上がったりエリゼ先輩のお兄様ラブの話が聞けなくなったのは残念ですけどもう<笑>本当に相変わらずねトーリズではユセと名乗っているのね So, right there, right there. That should be. This, I'm going to point that out right there. They said, So, in Thor's, you go, in, at Thor's Academy, too, you go by Muse. So, there's a little bit something going on. So, basically, kind of all kind of want to sum up the conversation that they sit there going here is that she used to be part of Astora Academy, you know, the all, all, the all girls school in Heimdallar, but、uh, now she's at Thor's Academy, too. So, this is kind of what the conversation is going to. And of course,、uh, Reen's here now. Reen-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-san-
So, as you can see right now, we're going to have some obvious pairings right now. So, Reen and Sharon are going to be playable, while as the other the, the other five students now are playable. So, while they go up, we now get Muse and Ash. Oh god, Yuna's not... She doesn't have max CP. Oh god, this is gonna be rough. Uh... Well, Kurtz is automatically gonna recover, so I there's no reason not to use Kurtz right there. So, they're at the top already. So, I'm gonna let this one rock because there's no. There, I know what's gonna happen after next. And McBurn and Campanella. So right now, as it stands, there's no way canonically Reen and Sharon can beat McBurn and Campanella. There's no technically no way possible that should work. So for this part, uh, I'm gonna sub out Ash because Ash is trash. <laughs> that rhymes, Ash trash. Uh, I'm gonna put on costumes from Muse, even though it does absolutely nothing in this part because it just will revert back. And I have that as well too for. Her. Oh yeah, I can't equip. I can't actually equip her yet, just yet, because the story won't allow it. Oh, I put. Oh, I put, must have put out Altino with the uh, unit stuff because we just wanted to make it fast. So it's cool she gets this and she gets this bird thingy oh, it doesn't really show hold on hold on let me let me get a better angle of it but i i, I don't know if you guys were able to see that but this is just a giant bird so for the most part you can't really train in here there's no point in training in my opinion you can't go outside these doors at all you just have to, have to run up the stairs And we're just going to kite them because there's no reason to fight them at all. Because we don't actually get any levels and there's nothing to actually unlock here. Plus, Ash and Muse are pretty, pretty... Are they, I know they're higher level than my main cast right now. But that's because my main cast is supposed to be 27 at this point. <laughs> but we are not because we're, we're just bursting through all of this. So, obviously, the key thing we note is, hey, we have this heal station here. So there must be a giant fight. Okay, you know what? We will save that for the next part. Until the next one, guys. Then you're going to see us fight McBurn and Campanella. <laughs>